side? Hey, Steve. Oh, I know. <laughs> I'd like to call to order uh, the Planning Commission meeting for City of North Ridgeville for March 12, 2024. Madam Secretary, please call roll. Members of the board, Ali. Present. Grotman. Present. Schumann. Here. Abens. Here. Smolik. Here. Members of the administration, Assistant Law Director Morgan. Here. Planning and Development Director Lieber. Here. City Engineer Evanson. Here. At this time, can everyone stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which we stand, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Has all the board members had a chance to review the minutes from their February 13th, 2024 regular meeting? Is there any corrections at this time? Hearing none, those minutes shall stand. I know there was some administrative approvals and zoning certificates. Um, Director Lieber, do you mind reviewing those quickly for us? Sure, Mr. Chair. Um, the first was just a change in owner of the BP gas station. The second was a new business certificate for that property that the Planning Commission approved the rezoning from B3 to I2 just a couple months ago. And then third was just a new business um, in an existing office space on Sugar Ridge Road. Okay, thank you. And the big agenda item tonight is the 2024 master plan presentation. Um, I know this has been a lot of work with the community. There was a group of members of the community that made up the steering committee. Um, I know the administration wants to thank them along with the planning commission. So I'm gonna kick it over to Director Lieber and the consultant and they could go and show us the presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this is an exciting night for me personally and also I think hopefully for the city of North Ridgeville that the first time since 2009 we're on the verge of adopting a citywide master plan that will provide some direction for the growth development and change that we'll expect to see in our city over the next 10 or 15 years so again like you mentioned so many people helped uh, to get us to this place and a lot of you are here tonight I'd just like to recognize those people who are on the steering committee if you wouldn't mind standing up and being recognized I just want to personally thank you for your participation so you can do it <laughs> And just so many other faces in this room have been at so many meetings, the, our public input sessions, um, it really has been a community effort. So um, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Sarah Bongiorno and Emily Hayes with Planning Next. So um, they will kind of walk through some of the highlights and then offer opportunity for the commission to have questions and answers at the end. Thank you.
just going to walk through several of the chapters here um, and highlight some of the, the context and the recommendations. So as Sarah said, the, <coughs> the different goal areas are organized into chapters, the first of which is around land use. Um, and this is really setting an opportunity to manage growth in a way that supports the community vision and the desired character. Um, so we're really s considering strategic opportunities within the realm of land use within this chapter. Um, through the process, uh, you know, a few things really popped out. North Ridgeville is primarily residential community and it's growing. It's growing fairly quickly. Um, and within the population of North Ridgeville, the cohort that's growing the fastest is um, people 65 and over. Um, and that really makes it important for us to ensure that the community develops in ways that support residents at all stages of life. Um, with that, we also understand that as growth happens, there's a really intentional way that we need to expand infrastructure, public services, utilities. Um, so we've developed land use principles that sort of guide the recommendations that follow. Um, they speak to sort of how and where growth will happen and what the focuses of land use should be. Um, so focusing on strong neighborhoods, parks, open spaces, and recreation facilities, um, responsible expansion, um, and management of infrastructure, expansion of employment areas, attractive gateways and well-designed commercial corridors, and a strong town center. And a few of the key recommendations that really support the goal within this area um, are highlighted here. The numbers that you see correspond to the number of the recommendation within the plan chapter. That's why they're out of order. Um, but really, these are sort of the the recommendations necessary to start this work. So that includes updating the zoning code, code to better guide growth, improve development standards, um, and to make sure that the development that happens is done so in strategic locations that really support the community in the ways that um, support that vision. question to the commission is would you like the opportunity to pause at the end of each topic to have any discussion or question or would you rather just go through all of the topics and then put Q&A or discussion at the end? I'll open it up to the rest of my colleagues. I would say go through the whole thing okay. before questions. Yeah, I, was, I would concur with that too. I think this is very important. All right. Okay. All right. Moving on to economy then. And the economy chapter really focuses on um, the quality and the density of jobs within North Ridgeville and sets the foundation for a healthy financial future. Um, looking at sort of the community as it is today, realizing that relatively few North Ridgeville residents actually work within the city um, and that the opportunities to generate sort of the most revenue for the city um, come from land uses that have high value property and buildings or high wage jobs. Um, and given the fact that North Ridgeville is um, pre predominantly residential, the city's financial well being really is dependent on being a very desirable place to live. Um, and so that sets up the recommendations we want to highlight. Um, they do uh, speak largely to attracting and supporting businesses. So first, preserving and acquiring land for employment uses, making sure that the land supply is available, um, creating programs to support small businesses that are interested in locating or starting up in North Ridgeville, um, and improving some of the areas that already exist, um, either through zoning updates or for additional support that helps retain and expand existing businesses. Um, within the housing chapter, we focus largely on providing choice in housing, um, making sure that housing that's available is attractive and affordable to current residents and helps support future residents. Um, we realize that the majority of the housing that's being produced is single family. Many are owner occupied. Um, and that the development costs have resulted in increasing costs for both owners and renters. Um, and again, we go back to sort of the population that's growing with the 65 and older cohort um, growing the fastest that will have an impact on how the housing market needs to evolve over the next 10 years. So one of the first steps um, is to really understand what the existing zoning is doing and updating that in line with the goals of this plan. Um, providing choice and housing type does come through um, a lot of that zoning and implementation. 
Um, and it does need to be complemented with policies that support older adults through aging in place policies um, and creating some opportunities for different types of housing. Um, we also want to consider the single family zoning, knowing that that will be well utilized and make sure that the um, products that come out of that serve the residents and create communities that people want to live in.
town center chapter? Yeah, so the town center was uh, a focus of engagement and really capitalizes on a lot of the trends that we're seeing in North Bridgeville. Um, it's expected that in the next five years within the area of 15 minutes around the town center location, uh, the number of households will increase, their incomes will increase, education levels will increase. Um, and what that translates to is custom customers and demand, opportunities for retail and for restaurants, um, and for the attraction of retailers and for restaurants, given that incomes and education levels tend to sort of correlate with buying power and some of their preferences. Um, it's also important to note that there will be a billion dollars of spending capacity within that 15 minute segment. Um, and as you get further out, that decreases pretty dramatically. So the town center concept needs to be highly competitive in experience and amenities in order to be really viable. Um, so community feedback focused on sort of what belongs in a town center, what is the vision um, for what should be there. And we heard pretty clearly that small local retail and restaurant is preferred over large chains that civic gathering space is really important. Um, and residential can be included, but is ideally above retail, so that, that ground level experience is, is, not, retail, or is not residential. Um, there's a desire for open space, and that does include trails, paths, and sidewalks um, to build upon sort of the mobility that we're seeing recommended elsewhere. Um, and we do include within the plan sort of high level steps to a town center just to illustrate that this is a long process. Um, there are a number of things that need to happen in order for a town center vision to be realized. Um, and that includes a lot of very sort of early support um, and sort of discussions about what the town center should be, as well as sort of technical steps in analysis and preparation and planning. It will require a lot of the partnerships that we've highlighted in the leadership section. Um, and then just sort of the, the process of, of actually going through development. Okay, and then the most important chapter of all, <laughs> implementing, right? We can create a great document. We went through this great process with the public. And Mr. Chair, just to point out, I think we have 83 recommendations in the plan. So that was the tally. So each of those recommendations has a long description and some justification and sidebars. So clearly we didn't want to spend the you know three hours necessary to kind of get into that granular level. But um, you know, I'm sure that the commission has reviewed this document ahead of the meeting. If there's any area you want to drill down in, we can certainly go to that section and have a more detailed conversation if you if any member would like to do so. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you for the great presentation. I guess um, since I sat in on that master steering committee, I sort of have a unique look because I was there from the beginning. Um, I do want to give uh, acknowledgement to the mayor, council, and administration. This truly indeed was a community plan. The city just didn't hire a consultant that hid in a closet and then just provide the plan. No, I mean, everything that's in here was community driven. Um, so thank you. I think that goes going to go a long way to help, you know, that way. Now we have this tool that we have to use. Now some important facts just sitting through this whole process that sort of stuck with me. Um, you know, you're going to hear the word bedroom community. Yes, North Ridgeville right now is a bedroom community. I think they even talked about the fact that only 13% of the workforce lives in North Ridgeville. I'm sorry, only 13% work in North Ridgeville. 16,000 people who live here are going to another community. That's all our income tax dollars that's gone. Um, you know, there's a community to the, to the east of here. They have a population of 32,000. They have 32,000 people who work there. So income tax is a huge thing, and that's how cities get stuff done. Um, so right now, if continuing development, we're going to be out of open space in 10 years if nothing happened. So I think timing, we need to do something now. That's why it's important we did this master plan. Otherwise, you know, all that, all that R1 area, all the white, is going to continue to build out. I know a lot of council, the mayor, density, density, why are we putting all these new subdivisions in? Well, unfortunately, the city really can't do anything about it because that's how it was zoned. But now we have a plan in place that will help us for what I call smart development. I think that's where we're at. Um, and then some other stuff that caught my eye was the big population boom in 2000. The reason for that was infrastructure improvements. The city put a giant sanitary sewer in that opened up all that land. I think we're at the next phase now, Center Ridge Road. That's a giant infrastructure improvement. That's going to be a catalyst for all this new development. So we had in 2000 that, now we're going to have Center Ridge. So I think we're at a great opportunity here to control that. Like I said, smart development. Um, the other thing was 40% of the housing since 2000. That is a lot. But the, most, the other startling fact is 40% of the housing was installed be, be, um, under 1969. So that means we, between those, you have like hardly any in that middle age group. It's all new or old. Um, so that makes North Ridgeville very unique. Um, and that's why there's a lot of flooding issues because a lot of that older stock, you know, they have to do upgrades. And that's, you know, that's sort of the stuff we're seeing right now. Um, so that's pretty much my comments. I thought, the, I thought it was an excellent plan. Uh, I appreciate it. And I'm going to open it up to the floor. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Mr. President, sir, I think it's awesome. I love the plan. Long overdue. It's, it's excellent. I love it. Um, that's why I moved my business here. When, when I, I mean, 20 years ago, I bought this property. I thought it was crazy. I mean, you know, building, my, you know, multi million dollar project in Ridge Tucker is what it was called. So, it was all crazy. But you know what? It's been very, very good for us. Um, between you know, Mayor Gillard at the time and President Council, Kevin Corpus, our mayor, um, it was like arms wide open. And I just, I'm, I'm, right decision. I love it. It looks great. Um, and whatever we can do, let's do it. Under the implement, implementation, it's more specifically housing, uh, mentioned that uh, we want a wider variety of choice from affordable to what's presently going into it. And I guess my question would be, how do you implement, the, especially the lower uh, income? Because your developers aren't interested in putting in low income type housing. Uh, that's not where their money is and we are a capitalist system. And I'm just wondering how that can be accomplished. So, you know, housing choice is about uh, doing more than just, you know, traditional R1 subdivisions. So 
you know, we have a challenge in the community with our zoning and our charter, our zoning that has so much land zoned R1 in our charter that uh, requires any, you know, multifamily district to go to vote of the people, although that changed in 2022. Um, and now we can do things like mixed use developments that we couldn't do before without having that additional hurdle of going to the people. So, you know, apartments, townhouses, um, you know, attached, you know, three family, like all these are ways that you can reduce housing costs. I know that there's always concern in the community of, you know, we, we heard loud and clear that people don't want high rise apartment buildings and small shoe boxes for people to live in. But we also know that there's a growing number of people that don't want to maintain, you know, large properties and that we, we just want to have something for everyone in North Ridgeville. The proportion of that is really up to council as you just make zoning decisions about, you know, how to amend our zoning code or um, rezone property in the community. But the goal is to kind of get away from that one style of housing and by providing multiple kinds of housing in different scenarios, whether it's, you know, single type districts that are residential or even mixed use residential districts is one of the ideas in the plan that we had where you could incorporate you know, more traditional lots with other types of housing product in the same development. So it still maintains that residential character, but um, could appeal to people at different price points. So I think that's what we're talking about, which is not mandating price points, which we don't do. It's just creating different um, ownership opportunities, size of lots, amenities, those um, ownership structures, all those things I think can help provide um, more options and more choices in North Ridgeville. Well, I, I hear what you're saying that we we can now do mixed development, but the charter still, if I'm not mistaken, uh, somebody wants to put up um, condos uh, and that type of development. It still has to go in front of the voters, and that's going to be an issue because I have to admit, as a councilman, what I get constantly in my ear, especially being on the planning commission, that these housing developers are shoehorning in all these homes in smaller and smaller lots, and many of the citizens within North Ridgeville don't like it. They want, in fact, there's a movement that they want to put in minimum sizes of one acre lots, if not five acre lots. Uh, I'm not saying I agree with it, but I'm just saying it's there. So I guess that's a perfect segue for one of my things that I think it's sort of um, a red flag that we might have to be cautious of. I know during this um, process, a lot of people wanted to maintain the agricultural feel of North Ridgeville, along with some of the larger lots, the, real, the rural residential. And we actually came up with a land use for that. Um, so I guess now it's gonna be the hard part is protecting that land use. And I'm not so worried about this current administration or council, but perhaps down the road, you never know, a different council and administration could come in and they might think differently of that, even though the general populace decided, no, I think that's a good idea for North Ridgeville. So I guess, how do we protect that? You know, I guess even, I, I guess legislation, but legislation could only go so far. So, you know, a master plan is a policy document. It's not um, zoning. So, you know, in order to prevent development um, of housing subdivisions, the either one of two things, you either rezone property or you change the district and what the requirements of the district are to make it more the type of development that the city would think is um, appropriate for that area. So again, like the, the master plan 
document should be used as a guide. So if, if someone is proposing a rezoning, you look at the rezoning against the plan, or if, if council's considering um, creating new districts or rezoning property, that again, this is used as a guide. When it comes to preservation, you know, my opinion is that preservation primarily comes from the private property owners, that the city would not be in the business of actively preserving farmland. Like we're in the business of uh, providing for economic development, for infrastructure, it, not for, you know, setting aside, but we can support those that wish to do that. We can support conservation groups. We can support those private property owners that wish to do that, or we could be a, you know, a connector in that case. Um, so, you know, I think that's, as you point out, a challenge in this community is kind of the tension between, you know, the preservation and the development, but I think we need to focus on what will generate, you know, tax revenues, what will support growth and development, what supports our current residents. I think that needs to be, as a city, our, our top priority. Okay, thank you. Is there any other questions or comments? Yeah, I, concerning town center, uh, the one plan that I saw, and I'm sorry, I couldn't see it here, uh, suggesting that uh, city hall be part of that, new city hall be part of that town center. I have to admit, I'm not real excited by doing that. The open civic area, absolutely. But city hall, not necessarily. I look at it from a tax point of view. Town center is gonna be a tax generating area. I, not sure City Hall pl plopped right in the center of it is in our best interest. I understand one of the reasons, and I'm not going to go into it, for having City Hall in town center, but uh, it's, it's not a deal breaker for me, but it's something that I'm concerned with. Uh, I think there's other places that City Hall should be put rather than in town center. Uh, mainly because of taxes. And uh, as the mayor will point out to you, we need tax money. <laughs> I think throughout the discussions, there was also maybe talk about a senior center also at the town center. And I think through the steering committee, um, the administration sort of loosened up what their total idea what that town center was gonna be. And I think that's a good thing because, you know, I mean, this is the mile high document. You know, we're not down at that programming stage where we're figuring it all out. But I, I think it's good that we're having this open dialogue mm -hmm. that, you know, and I would, I would tend to agree with you that city, yeah, because you want, you want generating income. I mean, I'm assuming it's going to be a TIF district. So you're going to want, you know, you're going to want uh, income generated. So that way uh, tax that, that, um, waterfall tax, if you will, will be used for infrastructure projects down the road. So if we put a city hall there, that's just taking away that potential of the TIF, if you will. I have to admit, I, I think the town center is probably going to go faster than what we're anticipating. And the indicator is, uh, and I was reading about this, uh, we're getting a new bank branch, Chase Bank. Chase Bank is busy closing offices all around the region uh, because of lack of business. But they chose North Ridgeville to put in a branch, which is indicating that their, their bankers are saying, this is an up and coming area for commercial and economic activity. And that's why I think town center may occur faster than maybe we're anticipating. So it's important that we are looking at this right now um, so that was my indication that we are an up and coming economic area. And, um, that was a great indicator. And even though we still have some citizens that think it's a coffee shop, uh, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, that's why I'm excited. And I have to admit too, I like the fact that I think it's still part of town center that we will put in some type of town townhomes, and I think that's an excellent idea, but I'm not sure how that's, that's going to, how that mixes with our uh, uh, charter and that type of thing. So I uh, don't know. I have to wait for legal to uh, inform us of that one. And 
Mr. Chair, to that um, question, I think that was one of the reasons for that charter change was so that mixed use zoning districts could be approved by council and not have to go to the vote of the people. So this would be one district, a town center district. And within that, council can determine what percentage of or density of residential versus other uses could be permitted. And you know, this was our first step, creating a concept. Um, I, I appreciate you know, your comments about City Hall. And you know, if City Hall is not here though, it has to go somewhere and be built somewhere and with some money. So one idea was that in, with a public-private partnership, there could be an opportunity to um, spend less of our money and more private equity to provide facilities that we might need. That's so, the reason why it's not a deal breaker for me, <laughs> for that <laughs> but, reason. No, but right. again, we're, we're early in that conversation and um, you know, there's no finished product here that we're asking the commission to vote on, just the idea that having the combination of a civic use with restaurant, retail, office, residential is a, is a kind of a proven kind of uh, blend that has worked in other communities and that creates, you know, kind of day and night vibrancy, like daytime populations, nighttime populations, and support for some of those restaurant retail uses that our community seems to really want to see here. So um, we'll work that out as we move forward. <laughs> question I have, and I guess this would be more for uh, our, our legal department, as it pertains to our zoning, are we, can we readjust what the particular zoning actually is defined as? In other words, we can remove some uh, uses from, say, uh, B3 or, and that type of thing. Are we allowed to do that? Absolutely. So we could zone out additional um, uh, car washes and coffee shops. <laughs> it's a, one of the things that I would just add to that is that the ability to zone is one of the hallmarks of home rule. Mm -hmm. So that's been established in case law for a long time. So yes, we would have those abilities. That's good. And the other thing this. Um, this report sort of recommended was like, for example, the town center, it might have its own, you know, we might get down to where we start creating its own rules, like architectural guidelines, if you will, um, that only pertain to that district. So that way we make sure that, you know, that it's being, you know, built the way we want to look at it, you know, we might control signage a little bit better. Um, and then we might limit the actual maximum height buildings could go just within that district that gives um we could give a little bit more you know power to the city if you will to actually control how that uh, is going to be built out that's where you and i might have a disagreement i'd like for town center to be multi-stories oh i agree it's gonna be multi-stories but i don't see i don't see stories i don't see anything above our ladder <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to say I haven't been in town that long, a few years, and um, I've just seen an enormous amount of just real simple changes, real subtle things going on, and um, I think it's a really good, it's a good thing to do this, uh, th this master plan. Um, are, are we five years, every five years we update this, or is this yeah. ten years? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an excellent, excellent document. And we have some. We have the power to make some zoning changes to match this, and and um, we can't make developers come in and do what we want them to do. We have a. We have to set the table for them, and this document and zoning will help us do that. And uh, so, uh, and but again, there's so many little things I've seen. I think the branding, the the, the rebranding efforts that. Uh, have happened, they're terrific. I know some people don't like them. I, I liked them from day one and I, they've grown on me even more since they've been up. Um, just some of the other stuff, since I've been on the, on the planning commission, uh, the um, opportunity to get some uh, education, the, is it the AIA workshop? Is that, I'm sorry? ABA, I don't know. APA. Oh, okay. Um, uh, I, I had the opportunity to attend some of those workshops before uh, years ago. And I'll tell you, I think probably it was probably like five, six years ago I went to one. Everybody was talking about town centers, mixed use. Everybody was talking about it. 
almost every community is talking about this now. They've got, either they have something already zoned or they're getting ready to. So this isn't like we're reinventing the wheel here or anything like that. Developers are gonna come if we give them an opportunity to, but they're gonna have their own ideas too. So we're gonna have to, there'll be some tussle, but uh, it's not necessarily a bad thing. But it, again, if, we, if you don't lay the groundwork for them, they're not gonna come because they don't wanna fight over it. They don't wanna fight to put up the thing they wanna do. So, and again, this is, I mean, obviously this town center thing, this is a, it's a great idea. It's, it, it obviously works. So hopefully we can pull something like this off ourselves. I think it's a great idea. Thank you. I think you hit on a really good point that you need that private public partnership, if you will. Because you know, the private, they won't be able to do it by themselves and public can't do it by themselves. You need that, that buy-in by both parties. And that's how you get a successful project. And we just have to lay out that groundwork, set the table, I like that, yeah. if you will. There you go, so. you have that. <laughs> All right, is there any other questions? Or As you pointed out to us uh, during that training session, we have to make it easy for developers to come to North Ridgeville because they're gonna go someplace else where it's easier if we make it difficult. And uh, that's what I like about this Ridgeville Ready. We're showing them that, come on in, we'll, you know, we'll welcome you, we'll help you where we can. And uh, so uh, that's, that's the important thing about this. And city council, I'll speak for them. We have our work cut out for us as far as zoning issues are concerned. And, but uh, we've already demonstrated that we can get that through on a quick basis, not needing emergency clauses. Mr. Chair? Go ahead. Um, I don't want to be like, like beating a dead horse, but almost you know, being a business owner in the city for 20 years. I did my homework, I did my research um, 20 years ago. And you look over the occupancy permits, um, what we issue, other cities, we're like number one in the state. Avon, Medina, I mean, that, that speaks volumes. But housing, you only get so much tax dollars off that, you do. We need business, okay? And whatever we gotta do to attract business here, I think we, that's what we should go after. My opinion, but you know, I, I, if you if you look over the last few years, North Ridgeville seems to be headed in that direction. I mean, we got that thing. If anybody's driven by that uh, trucking uh, terminal, it's awesome. That is an awesome facility. Huge. And Huge. Uh, and what's even better is no tax abatement. Uh, <laughs> That's a great job. And we are also uh, considering tax abatement for business moving in that's a foreign business at this point. They're looking at North Ridgeville. And uh, so uh, we're headed in the right direction. Okay, is there any other further questions or comments? I guess I'll open it up to the administration if they have any questions or comments. Uh, go ahead. Fairly practical one. You're talking about a high level view and granular was mentioned. Where do you see this document intersecting with like council when they're making their decisions or planning commission when they're making their decisions? How, are, how do you envision they, they will use this tool?
I guess to add to that, I, I think, you know, planning commission is going to be the more tactical group when it comes to all the zoning recommendations of the plan, um, spearheading and reviewing, um, you know, reviewing where we've just started an audit of the zoning code and that's going to be over the next month. Um, we're going to be doing some focus groups and assembling a steering committee for that. So we're already kind of launching some of these plan recommendations as we're going through this adoption process. So planning commission, you know, will be when it comes to reviewing zoning updates, rezoning requests, development proposals, this is a good tool. Council is a little bit different. You know, council controls uh, the first string. So, you know, how how I view how council can use this is come budget season when requests are being made to kind of weigh the requests against, well, how does this fit into our master plan? Is this, you know, not again, not every single project, not every culvert replacement is listed in here, is, but it's, is this infrastructure in support of um, existing neighborhoods or needed growth for the community? Uh, like how, how can this, um, how can these requests be weighed against the plan? So that's, really how I see council's role more, and then also in their in their legislative role um, in adopting code changes or um, rezonings or those kinds of things as well. Yeah. Yeah, I just added one thing. I think it was on the regional um, and the county level you can write the recommendations if the code is worth doing another act for it, even though it's a new plan or not. I mean, some, uh, some plans that are like more potty you can say nice things, but then you're like, well, Okay, thank you. So is there any further questions or comments? All right, hearing none, the chair will entertain a motion. Oh, go, go ahead. You wanna, can you do it? Yeah. Okay, I will. Now if, if we could always table it if, if everyone still needs to review some more, so I don't wanna <coughs> force anybody into a decision, but um, we could have a motion here if, we, if, if everyone's okay with it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make a motion that we um, that we recommend the um, North Ridgeville Ready Master Plan uh, to Council. Okay. Second. All right, Madam Secretary, call roll. Ali. Yes. Grapman. Yes. Schumann. Yes. Havens. Yes. Smolik. Yes. Motion carries unanimously. All right. Um, Madam Secretary, next on the agenda. <clears throat> ordinance number 2024-31 and ordinance amending section 1268.02 of North Ridgeville codified ordinances to eliminate truck terminals from the list of conditional uses in the B3 Highway Commercial District, referred by Council to Planning Commission on March 4th, 2024. Okay. Uh, Director Lieber, some background on this? Uh, sure, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, some months ago, a moratorium was introduced on truck terminals in the B3 District. Um, you know, there's some discussion over the appropriateness of that kind of heavy uh, traffic and heavy wear kind of activity in the B3 district given that so many uh, B3 properties abut residential areas. It was felt that it might not continue to be appropriate in that district. So moratorium was enacted to give some opportunity to review. Um, at this point, my recommendation is just to eliminate it from the B3 district. As I mentioned in the discussion of the master plan, you know, we're just beginning to embark upon a, a very comprehensive zoning audit that will then be followed by recommendations and code updates. So rather than just have this kind of waiting around in the wings or attempting to, you know, craft some specific conditional use standards, it felt maybe more appropriate just to um, eliminate it from the district while we reconsider these standards, um, see if we think it might be more appropriate in an industrial district like when you think of the Dayton Freights of the world, um, 
those truck uses are, are very heavy on our local infrastructure. So when you think of all the orange areas on the map, that could be a lot of trucks through, um, you know, through our main community corridors. So that was my suggestion to just kind of set this aside, remove it from the B3, and then we can kind of tackle that more comprehensive list of uses as we uh, navigate our way through our zoning update process. Okay, Mr. Chairman. I was gonna go through findings of fact. Then. Go, ahead. go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, is there any questions or comments from the administ administration? Okay, is there any uh, questions or comments from the general public? Hearing none, uh, public session's closed. Is there any questions or comments from the commission? Just, just a question, really. So, um, is most of Center Ridge Road B3? Is that the? Much of it is, not all. There's five B districts, so they're, depending on what area of Center Ridge you're at. Um, but B3, probably maybe more of our commercial corridor is owned B3 okay. than other B districts. Um, but again, a lot of those are right up against side streets and residential neighborhoods where that kind of traffic seems. Has anybody been knocking on the door to build one of these? On um, not recently, although there's one that has been operating illegally now for okay. a couple of years. Thank you. I guess through the, through the chair. Go ahead. Uh, pardon my ignorance. Uh, what is uh, Taylor Parkway zoned as? I two. Okay. Um, Mr. Chair. Um, so, okay, so Center Ridge. As far as like side streets, um, like what about Maddox, Case, Race, um, trucks, weight? Was that going to affect them also? This would eliminate the opportunity for new truck terminals in B3, so wherever B3 zoning exists. So these kinds of uses would still be permitted in I districts. Because there's a lot of commercial property on like a Maddox that's been there for quite, you know, 40, 50 years. It would not change rights to any existing legally um, operating business. If there was a truck terminal in a B3 and this were introduced, it would continue to operate as legal, non conforming for its life. Mr. Chair, I have a question. The definition of truck terminals is that could that potentially be a single bay or are we talking like multiple bays i would have to read the definition i can't answer that okay i mean i do know like i don't does marks have a truck bay i know i designed marks with truck bays that like, is you know. that, that is not the main use that is a retail use that okay. would have accessory so that's deliveries. an accessory use that's not right okay so that doesn't this would be this is this is where the main use okay. is a trucking facility. Understood, thank you. Okay, is there any other questions or comments from the commission? Uh, yeah, I'm through the chair. Question I would have is, I can name at least two places within my ward where trucks are parked, operating in R1 areas. Is that something that we can look into? Yes. All right, is there any final questions or comments from the commission? Hearing none, the chair will entertain a motion. Anybody else? Okay, I'll make a motion that we uh, recommend ordinance uh, 202431 to council. Ask for a second. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, Madam Secretary, please call roll. <clears throat> Ali? No. Grapman? Yes. Schumann? Yes. Habens? Yes. Smolik? Yes. Motion carries four to one. All right. Is there any other final business brought before the Planning Commission for tonight? Hearing none, meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thanks.